Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the basics of how to listen to heart sounds. Listen to heart sounds can sound crazy. And I know because people just don't know what they're listening to. So one of my uh, physicians in my medical school said, listen, let me show you exactly how you listen to heart sounds. And ever since then, like a rock star, I think I didn't know what I'm listening to. Actually, I really do know what I'm listening to, but it took some practice. And we're going to go over that. But before we start, I want us to understand the basic of what the human chest looks like, right? So this might sound a little complicated. I was trying to put the heart in there with the ribs. So here we have the two clavicles. You have the manubrium and the sternal body, the xiphoid process. Okay, basic stuff, just anatomy. And you have the ribs. So if you know how to count, this is very easy. Just we always make it. Now, this is rib one, rib two, rib three, rib four, rib five, rib six, and rib seven. All right, those are ribs, right? Those little things that keep your everything inside your body intact. Now, in between each rib, the space, and we get them up with a fancy name for it. We call it what? The intercostal space. Huh? Whatever. But it's fine. What, what can I do? So the first space between the first rib and the second rib is the first intercostal space. Can you imagine that? Rocket science. So this is the first intercostal space, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the list goes on and on, which I'm not going to talk about. Now, we have your nice, beautiful heart sitting there. It's just a pump. Guys, I love you. I know, but the heart is just a pump. Most of it's actually in here. So. And the way we listen to heart sounds is we start here at the top, in between the, the so before we even go there, we have four, four valves in our heart. Let's start with the basics, okay? Four valves. We have the nice, beautiful tricuspid valve, the mitral valve, and we have the aortic valve. And one more valve I forgot to put in there. I might just put it in here, right here somewhere. That will be your pulmonic valve. Now, the way the valves are set up and the angle at which the heart is set up doesn't make any sense when you listen to the heart, but it sort of kind of does. When we want to listen to any pathologies involving the what? The aorta, we go up in between the second and the third intercostal space. So that's the, called the aortic region. And there's a fancy name for it. So this is the right side of our body, and this is the left. How easy can that be? And we call this the right, which is the right side, upper, because sternal border, R-U-S-B, right there. Right, upper, sternal border, right, upper, sternal border. But it's in between the second and the third intercostal space. So kind of right in this region. It's a region. It's kind of a little area. In order to listen to our pulmonic valves, you have to listen next right here. That's called the left upper sternal body, right? This is the left side, the upper sternal body. To listen to anything that has to do with tricuspid, you come a little, you drop down a little bit, and you get the left lower sternal border of the tricuspid region. There's three little valves between your right atrium and your left, right ventricle. And the apex is in between the fifth and the sixth intercostal space. So kind of all the way here. So the way we listen to a heart sounds is we start up here, like that, dun, 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 and drop down and make a left. So it's kind of more, more like this. Bam, mm, mm. So we, we have a mnemonic for it. Aortic, right? Pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. All physicians taste milk. If that works for you, good luck. If it doesn't, it's fine. Just know aortic is here, pulmonic pulmonary, tricuspid, and mitral. Now we're going to start by using this little cartoon, guys, to learn our heart sounds. We're only going to go over the basics, and I'm going to throw in some two pathologies. And if you just know those, trust me, everything else, don't worry. We might pick it up on echo, or just say, you know what, it just doesn't sound right. So let's know the normal. Well, we're going to need a stethoscope, right? So this is not your typical stethoscope. This is actually a Littmann cardiologist stethoscope. It doesn't have a bell, but it does. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different kind of stethoscope because 
both the bell and the diaphragm are actually combined in one so you have to be really really good at using stethoscope to be able to buy this so if you end up buying this and you're like uh, i don't know what the bell is well the bell is part the way it works is it depends on pressure it's a pressure gradient if you press really really hard guess what you're using the diaphragm now to use the bell you have to lightly place it on the chest to listen so you have to be very good at using this i don't really say you shouldn't buy it but most likely i say get the one that has a bell and has just a, a diaphragm so at least you know how to switch it back and forth so but we're going to use this in an example now we're going to start with s1 s2 everybody wants to know oh what am i listening to i want to know what that is what is that is it aortic regurgitation or aortic stenosis no don't worry about that just know what a normal is and the normal is what s1 and s2 we know S1 is what? S1 is when the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve close. So when the heart, when the blood from the atrium goes down into the ventricle and the ventricle is trying to squeeze, guess what? You don't want all that work. It's like you don't want to, you know, have a basket that you keep throwing stuff down the drain and it's just going out the other side, right? So when you when the heart tries to contract, the blood inside the ventricle does not want to go back into the atrium because that's not where we want it. We want it to go into your body. Right? Go through the aorta and go right above the hill and go down. So in this case, both valves closes. And what that what did when they close, we get S1. Look at that. That's how we get S1. Isn't that smiley? I like the smiley face. Tell me you like it, right? So how do we get S2? Well, now the blood is trying to get out from the heart. The heart is squeezing, doing what? Systole. It's just a fancy name they give it, but it's just contracting. When the heart contracts, and now has overcome the pressure inside the aorta, right? Bam! These valves and this valve are gonna open up. It's like open, the blood's gotta come through. When the blood goes through the aorta, right? During systole, as the ventricles try to relax, so that the what can receive more blood from the aorta because this is a continuous circuit, it's not stopping, the train is moving. This two valve has to close during what ventricular diastole because when they close, they allow the recall of the aorta to point blood back into, into the rest of the body and also to prevent blood that's already in the aorta to come back down. That's like wasting all my time. It's like, oh my God, I'm just cranking it up and you're wasting all my time. So if I keep, if both valves are not shutting during S1, all this blood's gonna spill back in the aorta, uh, into the atrium. And also if these valves are not closing, all the work I'm trying to push water up off the hill is gonna come back at me again. All right? So that is how we get S2. When these two, the pulmonic, right? When the pulmonic valve, uh, let's use our green highlighter here. S2 is what? When your aortic valve and your pulmonic valve close. S1 is when our what? Mitral and tricuspid valve, they close. So I'm gonna make an illustration and from now on, this is how you're going to learn heart sound. You will never forget. Take your stethoscope and put it around your ears. And I want you to take your stethoscope and place it inside your arm, inside your hand. Now, the reason why I say you to do this is never do this. It's very deafening. It's not good. So you close your hands and I want you to hold your stethoscope like this high. And this is S1, that's S1, yeah, I know, one sound, look at that, S1, 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 that's my turn, tricuspid, S2, look at that. Now, when you have your stethoscope, you can actually hear this inside your ears, it's like a little small sort of sound, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. So we're gonna demonstrate that on the board. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, let's do that again. One, two. That's S1, S2. 
Wow, it sounds very complicated. No, it's very easy. Look at that. One, two. If you can just count one and two, you'll be good. So every time you listen to somebody's heart, just listen for one and two. Okay? That's all you need to start with. Now, if we go down here, now that we have learned how to listen to S1 and S2, remember? One, two. One, two. Because when I go to another pathology, now you're going to be like, what? I didn't hear that. Okay, we'll find out. So now that we know the normal, this is normal and everybody's happy. However, we might get a third heart sound. Now, when you have a third heart sound, I don't want you to freak out because if it's a young child, a young adult, maybe up to like 40, 35, or a, late, a pregnant woman in their third trimester or pregnancy, S3, which is the next pathology we're gonna talk about, or it could be a normal physiologically, we're gonna find out how it sounds like. So, most people say, can turkey. You know what? I've said can turkey for so long, I never remember it because I don't know what I'm listening to. So I said, my, my attending, Dr. Scott, said, this is how you hear S3. You put on your stethoscope, just like that. We place this in our hands, and this is one, two again. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Now, if I'm going to add a third heart sound to it, this is what it's going to sound like. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's do that on the board. Look at this nice smiling face. That's our S1. The second smiling face, S2. Check this out. One, two. That's normal. One, two. That's normal. Here, now I want you to hear very carefully. One, two, three. One, two, three. That is one, two, three. 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 I'm already squeezing the smiley face, but it's not, it's fine. It's just an illustration. Now, I'm gonna do it a little fast because when you're gonna hear it, it's gonna sound like this. Hear that? That is S3. So what really causes S3? Hmm. Usually, it's due to when you have a heart that's dilated or non-contractile ventricle that's just big and is full with a lot of blood and the atria is contracting and spilling a little extra blood down into a already non-contractile ventricle. So basically, where you have a huge ventricle, let's find a nice big diagram here. So let's put, if this is your heart and it looks this big, and there's just so much blood inside here and the atrium is not contracting, so it's the oscillation of blood between the atrium and the ventricle. That's usually what causes S3. But when, when does it become a pathology? Well, guess what? People with heart failure. So if somebody has heart failure, congestive heart failure, it could be what? Diastolic dysfunction, it could be systolic dysfunction, the heart is just not contracting, or it's what? You have severe myocarditis and you've eaten up all your heart muscle, and guess what? It's just thin muscle left in there and they're not contracting well. Now you got a lot of what? A lot of blood inside the ventricles, and now the atrium is contracted with all the fluid inside the ventricles. And that's pathological. So this is how I do it. If somebody tells me, oh, you know that patient has congestive heart failure? When I go to the patient and try to listen, well, where am I going to place my stethoscope? Well, I'm going to start at the aortic region, right? And we're going to go to the pulmonic region. And then I go down to the left lower sternal border and then go to the apex. Now, here's the trick, guys. When you listen, there's a left sided S3 at the apex. You place the patient on the left lateral decubitus position and you can hear this sound. That's S3. You can also hear it right at the, in between the fourth and the fifth, right here in the tricuspid region. That's the right-sided S3. That's how you know it. So you can cheat if you already know the diagnosis or take your time and listen. Wow, what am I hearing? Is that an S3? Because when I say an S4, you're gonna be surprised how different an S4 is. Now that we know S3, 
and we, as we can see, not really the happiest guy. But you got to remember, occasionally, it could be just a normal or could be pathological. Now, on to S4. S4 is very interesting. Now, in America today, how many people do you think has hypertension? A lot of people have hypertension. But the pathophysiology of hypertension is a completely different topic, which I'm not going to cover here. We just listen to heart. So if somebody has a prolonged standing, long-standing high blood pressure, what do you think is going to happen to the left ventricle? It's going to get what? Thickened. It's like going to the gym and working out. The heart is constantly contracting, so the, they have a really thickened left ventricle. Now, this little piece of atrium, this guy has this fairly, you know, light, thickened muscle that's not even enough. It's not trying to contract against this big guy. Having a small little guy, fighting against the big guy. You got this small guy fighting against this big guy. I think you know who's going to win, right? Push! And he's trying to push. He's still tiny little kid. He's trying to push this guy. He's like, oh my. Well, what are you thinking? Yeah, that's what happens when you have an S4. An S4 is an atrium con try to contract against what? A non-compliant ventricle. A stiffened left ventricle, usually left ventricular hypertrophy. So now let's hear S4. Now S4 is very interesting because S3 is very close to S2 after the second heart sound. However, S4 is close to S1. So let's see exactly how you're going to be able to hear. So you place your stethoscope again, just like we always do, and put it inside your hand. And just use your hand. This is S1 and S2. One, two. One, two, right? One, two. One, two. This is S3. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And if you want to use can turkey, that's fine. It's can turkey. Can turkey. Can turkey. Can turkey. You get it? However, if you're going to do S4, people often use Tennessee, but I, I don't know what they're talking about. This is what they're trying to say. Can you hear that? Now, that's absolutely different, right? Because it sounds like this. Now, S4 is so close to S1 that when I do it really fast, you might not even notice. Look at this. Because it sounds like Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. S4, S4, S1, S2. So that's how I do it. Very, very easy. So let's try S1, S2, S3 again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right? But S4 is different. S4 guys. So this is the basics. If you just know S1, S2 and you're able to even detect S3 and S4 in patients, that's great because now you can build on your knowledge and I want you to go to the website I'm going to write below as a description of this video so you can go and learn about the more complicated aortic murmurs, aortic stenosis, pulmonary stenosis, aortic regurgitation and Tricuspid regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, all of the complicated pathologies of different heart sounds. But honestly, this is where I do it. When I see you and I sit next to you, I'm like, okay, do you have any medical problem? I have high blood pressure. Well, when I listen to your heart, I want to listen to S1, S2, but at the back of my mind, I say, wait a minute, maybe you might have an underlying S4 because you have what? You might have a left ventricular hypertrophy. So let's draw your heart. Look how thick that muscle is. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? If you have a left ventricular hypertrophy, I might be looking for an S4, and that's how I pick it up, right? But if you have heart failure, I'll be looking for what? An S3, and that's basically how you listen to heart sound. 
I hope I made it very, very easy for you so you can go ahead and teach somebody else. Sit next to each other in the hospital, at home, bring out your stethoscope, put in your hands, and just listen. You can hear it all loud and clear. Thank you very much for watching our video today. We hope you had a good time learning how to listen to heart sounds, and now you're going to be a rock star and teach somebody else. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.